Last year, I reviewed The Princess Diaries, which is actually going to be celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. So now let's talk about the sequel, The Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dole, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 2004 rom-com sequel, The Princess Diaries 2. Released by Disney and directed by Gary Marshall. Starring Anne Hathaway, Heather Marasso, Hedger Elizondo, and Julie Andrews, along with John Reese davies Chris Pine, and Raven. Or Raven Simone to y'all. Now, unlike its predecessor, it it's not based on any of the books, though. Well, the film kind of mostly received unfavorable reviews, but it was kind of close to being mixed. It was still a big success, though, at the box office. Anyway, well. If you're ready, let's get this started. Oh yeah, I mentioned Chris Pine. This was actually his film debut way before Star Trek or even Wonder Woman. Okay, enough said. That about, in other words, okay, that about covers it. Let's get started. Oh, before I get started, if you have not seen my review of the first Princess Diaries movie, click on this card that's coming up before you go into this review. Okay, I just wanted to give you all enough time, just in case you haven't seen my review of the first. Okay, here we go. Taking place five years after the first film, Mia Thermopolis has just graduated from Princeton University's Woodrow Wilson School and has returned to Genovia with her bodyguard Joe. There she will await her reign once her grandmother, Queen Clarice, abdicates. During Mia's 21st birthday party, she dances with all the eligible bachelors in hope of finding a husband. She becomes attracted to a handsome gentleman named Nicholas. During the course of the night, Mia's tiara falls off and is caught by a member of Parliament, Viscount Mabry, who secretly plans to steal Mia's crown. Excuse me, everyone. While the Parliament is in session... The next morning, Mia stumbles upon a hidden room that allows her to secretly listen in. Viscount Mabry, Mabry reveals his nephew, Lord Devereux, is another heir to the Genovian throne. Despite Queen Clarice's objection, the only way Mia can assume her duties as queen is if she marries within the month. So Clarice invites Lord Devereux to stay at the palace, while Mia is shocked to discover... He's actually Nicholas. Mia's best friend Lily uh, surprises her by visiting. Together they pick through potential husbands. Mia eventually chooses Andrew Jacoby, Duke of Kenilworth. And days later they are engaged. Mabry plans to have Nicholas seduce Mia and dissolve the engagement. The attempt fails, though the two have an argument while in a broom closet together. Joe tries to persuade Clarice to publicly pursue their feelings for each other as her reign as queen is coming to an end. For a ceremony, Mia is to ride side saddle, but is inexperienced. So Clarice provides an ancestral wooden leg decoy to make it look like she's riding side saddle. Mabry spooks Mia's horse with a rubber snake and Joe rushes to her aid. Accidentally tearing off the wooden leg, humiliated, Mia flees to the stables where Nicholas fails to comfort her. At a garden party, Mia and Nicholas quarrel about Mia's relationship with Andrew. Nicholas tricks Mia into admitting she doesn't love Andrew. Frustrated, she argues, but instead gets bombarded by a kiss. At first, she kisses him back. But then backs away. Nicholas pursues her, which causes both of them to fall into a fountain. And Clarice finally tells Mia that her behavior with Nicholas needs to stop. Yikes. 
Well, during the Genovian Independence Day parade, Mia sees some boys harassing a little girl and realizing that the harassment of the girl was similar to how Nicholas and Mabry have been trying to steal her own crown, abruptly halts the parade to comfort the girl. Learning that the girl, Carolina, and the other children are orphans, Mia has a vendor give them all tiaras and lets them walk with her in the parade. Everyone is impressed by her act of generosity, while Mabry sees it as a political maneuver. However, Nicholas is as well is impressed by Mia's care for Genovia and begins to have second thoughts about taking over the throne. Mia later decides to convert one of the royal palaces into a temporary children's center. That night, Mia has her bachelorette party, inviting princesses from around the world, where Clarice surfs on a mattress and sings a duet with Princess Asana, one of Mia's good friends. Who, if I'm not mistaken, Asana is played by, yeah, Raven, Raven Simone, who I believe that's that right about the time she was becoming a big star on Disney Channel's That's So Raven. No, where was I? Okay, yeah, hey, okay. In the meantime, Nicholas attempts to convince his uncle to stop their pursuit of the throne after realizing how well Mia is doing as a ruler. It is in this conversation that Mabry realizes Nicholas has fallen for Mia, but Nicholas says that Mia will never love him. However, Mabry seemingly allows Nicholas to pursue Mia, later revealing to his surly and mistreated housekeeper Gretchen that he plans to let this ruin Mia's chances of becoming queen. It is also revealed that he has been manipulating Nicholas as well, trying to fool him into thinking that it was his late father's wish to become Genovia's king. Nicholas comes upon Mia as she is practicing her archery as part of her coronation rites. He helps her succeed in getting the arrow hit the bullseye, something she has been struggling with. That's a good part. She tries every time and misses or hits something else. Yeah. Nicholas then informs Mia that he is leaving, but asks to see her just one more time before he goes. She declines, saying she is under close guard. That night, Nicholas appears outside Mia's window and asks her to come out. Lily encourages her to go, and Mia sneaks out. They ride out to a lake where they share secrets dance, and eventually fall asleep. They awaken to find a man in a boat videotaping them. Mia thinks Nicholas set her up, while he insists he had no idea. By the time Mia returns to the palace, the scandalous footage is already being broadcast. Andrew is disappointed and kisses Mia to see if there is a romantic spark between them. They realize that they do not love each other, but do not call off the wang for the good of Genovia. The wedding is to take place the following day, and Mia's mother, Helen, comes with her new husband, Patrick, and their newborn son, Trevor. Nicholas decides against attending, but Gretchen informs him they may re engineer their televised scandal. Now to the ending of this, the final act. You know the procedure. Five seconds to stop this video. And fast forward to the time below as you go to the description box. If you've seen the movie already, continue on after the five seconds. Thank you for your understanding. Like always, here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Before the wedding, Joe informs Mia that Nicholas is innocent. While walking up the aisle, Mia suddenly stops and charges out of the church. Clarice follows, and Mia says she doesn't want to marry because of the law. Clarice encourages Mia to follow her heart, something she has never done and has now cost her Joe, the only man she truly loved. Mia re-enters the church, and after pointing out how her grandmother has ruled Genovia while unmarried for a number of years, she tells the members of Parliament in the audience to consider the significant women in their lives and questions if they would have them do what they're trying to force her to do. In other words, marry someone she does not love. Mabry cites the law again and once again suggests that his nephew be the named king, but Nicholas appears and refuses to be king. 
Mia proposes the law on royal marriages be abolished, and the parliament unanimously gives it assent. Encouraged by Mia to have her own happy ending, Clarice proposes to Joe, and they are promptly married. About a week later, Mia is preparing for her coronation when Nicholas arrives at the palace. He professes his love for Mia on bended knee and they share a private loving kiss. The next day, Clarice finally steps down and Mia is crowned Her Majesty Amelia Mignonet Thermopolis Rinaldi, Queen of Genovia, with all in attendance in the royal palace. And then an epilogue shows the Genovian Parliament now allows female members, one of whom is Charlotte, Clarice's lady in waiting. In a final scene, Queen Mia officially opens a new children's home with the help of Carolina. End of story, my friends. So, what did I think of the Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement? Well, why not? Well, I've not seen this as many times as its predecessor. I recently watched this last week, or oh, no, wait a minute, earlier this week, excuse me, earlier this week on Disney Plus, after I hadn't seen it in a long time. I mean, I feel this film's a little underrated in my view. While it still became a box office hit, despite what Craig said, the film went on to make $134 million worldwide, uh, and still it became a pretty darn good success. Anyway, I will say that it's almost close to as good as its predecessor. John Debney's score was pretty good. And, well, and of course, I like the cast, Anne Hathaway especially, once again, doing a great job as Mia. Julie Andrews, once again, great as Clarice, and Hector Elizondo as Joe. John Reese davies plays Mabry, pretty good. Hermann Rosso, once again, plays Lily, very good. Now, Chris Pine, in his first film performance as Nicholas, I liked it. And Callum Blue plays Andrew. I've heard that name before. Let me see. Oh, yeah, he's been seen. Oh, yeah, this guy's been showing various shows like um, Dead Like Me, The Tudor, 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 sorry. I get that name mixed up every time. Um, he's been seeing Smallville and The Secret Diary of a Call Girl. I thought the name sounded familiar, but he's done lots of other things. Not too bad. With and Raven, of course, really good. We also have some other familiar characters. Oh yeah, Larry Miller returns in this as well as Paolo, the stylist who fixed me up in the first movie, if you remember that. And it's not too bad. He's kind of funny. And we also even have um, Tom Posen. Most of y'all know him from, well, starring on um, New Hard and also appearing in Mark and Mandy. He's in this. Also, if you'll see closely, you'll actually get to see a cameo appearance by Stan the Man Lee himself. Yep, Mr. Marvel himself. Um, oh, yeah, we have um, Abigail Breslin. As Carolina, actually, you'll see a, you'll actually see her brother um, Spencer in this too, playing um, a younger prince or something like that. Um, which of course, um, um, Breslin's are, had already done some flicks with Disney, like the Santa Claus Two and the Kid. Anyway, nevertheless, it's not too bad. The story is reasonable and what have you, but it's got a lot of fun. Not quite, almost not quite as fun as the first one, though, but it still proved to be pretty fun in ways. Now, there has been talk about a third one, and well, despite Gary Marshall is dead and what have you, uh, yeah, because it's been almost five years since he passed away, the project was shelved indefinitely, but however, Hector Elizondo discussed the development of the third installment, saying he knows that Anne would like to do it, Julie would like to do it, and even he would like to do it. Well, 
Well, in early 2019, she confirmed... Well, Hathaway confirmed that a script is completed. And she and Julie Andrews are currently on board to co-star in a film. So... Well, it won't air production until it's perfect, they say. So, let's hope for the best we will get a third Princess Iris flick. Who knows when. I know Anne Hathaway's grown up and what have you, but I'm. But we'll hope for the best. But anyway, but but the question is, would I recommend the Princess Iris to royal engagement? I'd say, yeah, sure, go ahead, give it a try. I mean, if you're a completionist, I mean, if you like the first one, you might like this one. I mean, I like it, but I don't. I don't love it though. But I like it though. But anyway, what are your thoughts on the Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement main, excuse me, yeah, Royal Engagement, excuse me. Please leave it, leave a comment for me in the comment section below. If you like the video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel as well, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of 13 Going on 30 with Jennifer Garner. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, you may want to see some of these other fun-filled um, movies and what have you. If you like, go to the upper left-hand corner for my review of another underrated um, chick flick I reviewed last year, alongside The Princess Diaries. That being What a Girl Wants with Amanda Bynes. Or if you'd like, go to the upper right-hand corner and see my review of the, the breakout hit for Disney's Touchstone Pictures, Splash, with Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. Or, if you just want something different, just go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my review of The Fault in Our Stars. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.